Hello and be welcome to another episode of Let's Develop Conway's Game of Life. Over the last, actually, month by now, I spent a lot of time thinking about how I could uh, proceed with this series. Thought about introducing tools and showing new mechanisms and whatever. But in the end, uh, I decided I want to actually get our Conway's Game of Life running. So uh, in the long run, I want to give it a uh, UI and I want to like give it input and run the game and whatever. So um, yeah, in fact, do some real game development here and make our Conway's Game of Life a real game uh, we can use. Unfortunately, I don't have a clue about game development, so uh, I got stuck here again until I came across uh, a blog post from uh, Eric Smith on the Edslight blog. Um, and Eric happens to have a master's degree in game development, actually, and did this blog post about test driving algorithms. Because he said, in his experience, it's kind of hard for people to test drive algorithms because either they copy it over from somewhere and have it complete to begin with, and then they don't see the reason why they should write tests, or uh, at least people know the whole algorithm and then have the problem to break it down into small pieces to actually test drive the development of it. Uh, so he decided to do this blog post series about test driving uh, algorithms on the example of a game loop, which is exactly what we need here. So I sent him an email and asked him uh, if I could use this material and Eric kindly agreed, so thank you very much. Yeah, and now I will follow his example of test driving a game loop to get our Conway's Game of Life running. Okay, so first, um, since I, yeah, I didn't have a clue how a game loop works, and I only learned it by reading uh, Eric's blog articles. I will give you a short introduction about what game loops actually do, how they work, and then we get started. Uh, small disclaimer, I will be working in Java here, even though uh, Eric in his posts works with C, C Sharp. But uh, since the languages are quite similar, at least in the parts we use, uh, there should not be too much of a difference. Okay, so back to the game loop. Um, as opposed to many other applications, games usually don't wait for the user to input stuff, but they update themselves uh, permanently. So games usually run in the loop in uh, what's apparently called the game loop. Um, this loop is iterating, let's say for now forever, and in every loop iteration, it processes inputs that might be there from whatever source, the user, the internet, cosmic rays, or stuff. Um, then the game updates the game state, which would be in our uh, case of the Conway's Game of Life, updating the universe. And then of course, it got to render the uh, updated state out to the UI so that the user can see what happened. Okay, um, that's like the, the schema of the game loop. But actually, if we would implement it this way, strictly it would be broken. Because uh, currently the loop executes as fast as your computer can go. So uh, it would execute faster and faster machines and slower and slower machines. Depending on your age, you may know that uh, effect if you uh, try to play an old game on a new computer and it goes that fast that you can't keep up anymore. Um, I guess that's exactly what happens if you implement the game loop this way. And yeah, since we want to play our game still in like, let's say, half a year or year, and uh, we don't want it to update faster than we can uh, see anything, we want to actually put some uh, frame limiting logic in here. So say, uh, do only a certain amount of updates per second or stuff. Um, but yeah, we're going to, to test drive that into our loop. And for now, I will not uh, put it into our schema. What I've shown you here is really the, the schematic view on the, on the game loop and the details we'll figure out while we develop it. Okay, and with this, I already want to get started. Since the game loop is an abstract thing, 
and I may want to reuse it for other games I'm going to develop in the future. I'm going to put it into its own Maven project that my game of life implementation can depend on. So I'm going to create a new Maven project here real quick. Um, use the simple project and create com let's developer games game loop. Uh, yes, stay with the defaults for the rest. And then let's quickly add JUnit so we can do some test driven development here. Dependency at JUnit. I hope that this will work since uh, unfortunately my internet connection is broken right now. Uh, but I should have JUnit in my local repository so this should work yes apparently it does fine so we can start test driving the game loop um when we remember the the tests uh, or the when we remember the, the the scaffolding like the template of the game loop i showed you um then the first thing we um have to somehow treat is this um loop thing that I showed you as an infinite loop, which in fact um, it isn't because I mean, we sometimes end our gaming sessions, even though um, sometimes you get addicted, but eventually you're going to end the game without like shooting it from the task explorer. So um, yeah. The game is actually not running in an infinite loop, but in a loop that is somehow tied to the game's running state. So let's write a first test that says, okay, um, does nothing if game is not running. So the game loop should in fact do nothing if the game's not running. Makes sense, right? Okay, so let's create a game loop here, which does not exist, so I use the more unit shortcut to quickly create the game loop here. That's fine, instantiate it, assign it to a unit under test variable. Um, then of course we want to run the game loop, which requires us to scaffold this run method. Uh, test is executing, so I can quickly delete this senseless comment there. And then I want somehow to assert that um, the game was not updated, but we don't have the game in here right now, right? Um, so I would like to assert false here that my I have some test game uh, is updated. So I want to assure that the test game is not updated and therefore I actually need to introduce some, some concepts here, like the concept of a game, which is actually going to be an interface that my games implement. So let's quickly factor this uh, interface into our code. Uh, and then actually we want for our test to like um, get an instance of that interface that has some behavior. Um, normally, I would probably use a mocking framework to do that, but um, Eric in his implementation is going for uh, manual mocks, so I'm going to stick with that for now and then use this example maybe to later uh, introduce some mocking frameworks in future episodes. So what I want to do here is actually um, quickly implement a, a manual mock, like a test game class that implements our new um, game interface and that we can instantiate to work on in our games uh, in our tests here so it's a test game test game new test game and actually this is supposed to have an is updated field since this is only a mocking class I exact public fields here um, which I would normally not accept in, in any Java logic. But for now it's just easier, so I stick with it. Um, then of course I need to hand in the test game somehow into the game loop, which requires me to 
create a constructor, execute the test, does work, so I can take the time to refactor this a bit. For once, this is called game, and uh, then also this should be the interface type and not um, the game mock type. Okay, switch back to the tests, uh, test is still running. So we have the test game up here, we hand it in, we run and is updated is actually not um, set to true, which is not that surprising. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If not, drop me a comment, send me a message, let me know what you think about it. And yeah, hope to see you next time.